This is the 2024 Honda Ridgeline. Did Honda make the right changes? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day and today I'm at Holmes Honda to show you what those changes are, which the majority of which are going to be on the interior. It'll be interesting to see what everybody has to say about that. There are quite a few things that remain the same, including your LED headlights and LED fog lights. We'll find a change here on the front end that has to do with the design of the grill and likely you can see the differences here. A little bit more of a rugged look with the overall design of the way everything is laid out here. That's really it for the front end of the vehicle as far as changes goes. You're still going to have standard all-wheel drive, front-wheel drive not available and that's been that way for a few years now. We will find the power adjustable manually folding side view mirrors with turn signal indicators built in. They are heated and you will find your blind spot information system that's actually on the inside of the truck. For those who are wondering, that's not going to be in the mirrors themselves like it is on some models. That's right here, but it is here. I know that's very important to a lot of people. Now this is the RTL trim level as I mentioned earlier in the video and here's one of the things you get remote start. So you can see no changes with the remote, but as far as the exterior goes with our final change on the exterior of the truck, it's right here. You have the name Ridgeline now stamped into the tailgate. Again, supposed to be more rugged. Tell me what you think about that. That's it as far as the exterior changes go. For 2024, under the hood of the Ridgeline remains the 3.5 liter Honda VTEC V6. 280 horsepower and 262 pounds-feet of torque still made it to a nine-speed automatic transmission. And let's take a quick look at the MPGs for people who may want to know. Let's try and give you an easier way to see that. 18 city, 24 highway, 21 combined, and 4.8 gallons of gas for every 100 miles driven. I'm going to open the gas door by pushing that button right there. It's good that that is locked. It does have capitalist fuel fill and it's a 19 and a half gallon gas tank. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, there are some things that remain the same here with the Ridgeline. And I think that's good news for some people, including the tailgate and its functionality. You still have the ability to open it two different ways. That makes gaining access to the bed easier because, well, you don't have to have the tailgate as far back here, kind of making it harder to reach into the interior of the bed. So that is good news. We'll also open the compartment right here just to show you what's here. There is a little bit of space there. That's always useful. Four tie downs, two in the front, two in the rear. And you also have your in-bed cargo lighting and the almost completely flat surface of the bed helps in a lot of ways as well depending on what you might need to haul back here. But here's something you can tell Honda down in the comments section. Number one, should we make sure this doesn't fall down? That's actually not Honda's fault. That's Tom's fault. You can make fun of me for that or whatever you want to. But the thing you can ask Honda about is how long can you make the bed when the truck is redesigned? I know some of you would like to see a little bit more bed length. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But what would you like for that to be? And you still have the lockable bed trunk. There is the lock right there. So you can lock that and there is plenty of space in here. Nothing has changed here, but just so you can see what's here, especially for those who maybe haven't looked at the Ridgeline before, you can have partitions right here that section this off into four different areas. And that could have a lot of advantages for one being tailgating. If you're going to fill this area with ice, well, the good news is you can have drinks in one area, snacks in another, however you want to set that up. And when all of that ice melts down, there's your drain plug. And there are a multitude of ways you can take advantage of this area, not only for storage, not only for tailgating, but you can also spray off dirty boots or shoes or whatever. And then again, clean that area out, let the muddy water drain out. That's easy to deal with. And here is the tray that holds the spare tire. There are tray bolts up here I don't know how well you can see that in this video, hopefully really well right there. One thing about that, when you take those tray bolts out, it can be a little challenging. Make sure you don't over tighten those. If they're over tightened to begin with, you'll know you don't want to over tighten them when you put everything back in. The tray does slide back. In fact, let me open this area again. 
and sit on this area. And yes, I heard a couple of you saying, well, Tom, why don't you show us how it looks when that tray slides out? There you go. Now you can see, in fact, here is one of those tray bolts I was talking about that you don't want to over tighten because next time you need to slide the tray out, it is a pain to get those out again, unless you have extremely strong hands. And how about size in inches? Something you don't get in a lot of these videos. We're looking at 45 inches wide. Now that's gonna be in this area from right here to right here. If we step up to this area and measure from one side to the other, we're going to gain six inches and go to 51 inches. And the height from the floor so where the floor or the bed trunk closes right here, we're looking at 18 inches. And finally, if we measure within this area, right here to right here, we're looking at 14 inches. If we step up to this area, we're looking at a total of 20 inches. Now, what about towing capacity? Up to 5,000 pounds and payload comes in at 1,515 pounds, up to 1,559 pounds. And here are the measurements in inches as far as the size of the bed. We're looking at 63 inches if we measure to this area of the bed. If we measure all the way to the tailgate when it's lowered, that's 83 inches. We're also looking at 53 inches as far as the opening area right here. And when we get into the interior of the bed, the width increases another 10 inches to 63 inches total. And let's talk a little bit about the rear seating area. The armrests are still comfortable. You still have a little bit of space here for snacks, storage, whatever anybody wants to put there that will fit, and a drink holder. Should Honda add a door bin on the door panel here when the ridge line receives a full redesign? You can still use these 60-40 splits seats here with the seat cushions. You can still push those into the upright position and add some cargo capacity back here. And after a conversation recently, I had somebody who told me they had traded a Ford F-150 in on a Ridgeline and said the Ridgeline was just a lot easier to get in and out of. It is lower to the ground, that helps, but that's just one of those things to think about. Storage pockets on the rear of the back seats, rear air conditioning vents, as well as connectivity options. At least one back here in the rear in the way of a 12 volt power outlet. And you'll still find the fold down armrest with the cup holders built in. I do like this design because not only is it large, plenty of real estate for people to rest their arms on here, but if there's two drinks here, the area that is used as the armrest is still available. Instead of having the cup holders in more of the typically laid out position where people normally, car makers or truck makers normally put them, I like what Honda has done here. Now, something else to consider for the future of the Ridgeline that we might see. What about a panoramic sunroof? Obviously still the traditional, more conventional size sunroof. It does tilt and slide open. And I know a lot of you are saying, all right, Tom, what would I have to pay if I came into Hones Honda for this refreshed Ridgeline RTL? $44,430. Let's see what else you get for the price. The same basic layout here with the front doors, but it does have the upper and the lower door bins. Heated seats that are power adjustable for the driver and the passenger, but the big change you can see right there, the center console and gone are the armrests on the seats. So now the lid for the center console is an armrest. It's no longer that what at least I used to call garage door style lid, if you could call it that. So now we have something a little different. Depending on where the seats are positioned or a person's height, that can easily be used as an armrest. Just depends on how tall you are. And there is a lot of space in here. So Honda says you could put a suction cup for a GoPro, well, not really, but you can. That's what I had in there. A tablet will fit, the cell phones can fit up here, or at least one, and there is a lot of space within. You're still going to have the push button shifter, and there is plenty of space up here next to the wireless charging pad for more storage, more connectivity up here. Now we do have a couple of USB options here and the 12 volt power outlet. And just because I know a lot of you like to see it, there is the upper console. You can see what all is there. I hope that shows up well on the screen. Obviously a few different controls there. 
We also had the sunglass holder here. Now, there's no conversation mirror built in, so if you want to give your rear seat passengers the angry eyes or the kind eyes or the confused eyes or whatever eyes, you'll just have to turn around. Just don't do it while you're driving. How many of you can't stand it when someone's driving and they turn around to talk to who's in the back seat while they're driving? And no changes as far as the door panel or anything like that goes. You still have your seat memory here on the RTL trim level and all of the controls you expect to see here. You can still drop the lever right here to adjust the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel that is leather wrapped. However, there is the new seven inch digital instrument cluster, a completely different look than we've seen with the Ridgeline in the past. Now you will find this on other Honda models, so it may not be something you haven't seen before, but it is here and it is noteworthy. So you can go through and make some changes. You can go through and get a lot of information depending on what you want to know about with your instrument cluster. Easy to deal with. I've had a few people ask me in the past if you can get rid of that digital speedometer right there in the center. No, you can't. I don't think that's a big deal. Tell me what your thoughts are. People ask different questions and I always wonder who else has the same question that maybe hasn't phrased it just yet. Everything else remains the same here as far as the steering wheel goes and you got your shifter paddles, all the controls here for those things that blink on the exterior of your vehicle that a lot of you like to save the life of the bulbs on, hint, hint, and you also control your headlight, taillights, and fog lights right there. I can't really say anything so funny about that, can I? Some of you got what I said and some of you didn't. And if you got mad about it, that means you probably don't use your blinkers. And here you control the windshield wipers. Yes, if you made it to this point in the video, you need to laugh. Thank you for making it this far. And it's a good thing you did because otherwise you may not know about another big change here within the interior of the Ridgeline, the now standard across all trim levels, nine inch infotainment screen. An upgraded processor, it's supposed to get rid of the lag that we saw with the previous version of what was here. You will also find standard across all trim levels too, because it's part of this system, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility for your cell phones. And you can see how fast that screen is working there. So everything doing a lot better. You also find some upgrades to just the overall look, design, and feel. And you do obviously still have your backup camera, your multi-view rear view camera. You can see even that seems to respond better or quicker. Either that or I'm just getting used to it. Maybe that was my fault all along. I don't know. Everything else pretty much remains the same here, but in case you're curious about driving modes, let's take a look at what those are. So snow mode, and that's not the default driving mode, snow, mud, sand, and then you have normal. So when you turn the ignition off, it is going to go back to that mode. You also have your button right here for econ mode, as you can see right there, on or off, and the corresponding graphics that go with that. You also can go into drive or sequential mode right there, and that will give you the D down there or the S and let you know what driving mode you're in. You do have tri-zone climate control. You control everything here in the front, so pretty easy to deal with, pretty simplistic. Other than that, those are the changes to the Ridgeline for 2024. Now, I will say this, there are more changes to the Trail Sport. When Holmes Honda has a Trail Sport Ridgeline, I will give you more details. But tell me what you think down in the comment section on this particular model, on the RTL that we looked at in today's video. Did Honda make the right changes? Tell me what you think and tell me why you answered the way that you did. I'm always curious to know. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this Ridgeline for the day, which by the way, there is a link down in the description of the video if this is something you want to buy. Check that out. If you come into the dealership, tell whoever you talk to that Tom from Vehicle Visionary sent you their way. You found out about the vehicle through my video. I also want to say a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, Please be sure to hit the like button. That helps me out a lot. Please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future videos. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.